Monday. The Manic Monday. Lots going on today. I'm James. Joining me today is Rob. Look at that guy right there. That's Batman. It's Batman and Monday. Manic Monday, Batman Monday, Morbius Monday. Fantastic Beast and Where to Find the Monday. A lot of things going on on this Monday. Thanks for joining me right now, Rob. It's great to be on here, bud. Uh, yeah, good to be uh, doing more than one show in a row, like uh, with without like you know a month or something in, in between. <laughs> it's crazy seeing you anyway. Uh, yeah, thanks for joining me. You were on the uh, Casual Friday last week where we talked about the Batman a little bit and some early reviews, and now the real reviews, the big reviews are coming in from the critics and the people who went to fan events all through last weekend. There's the real uh, Batman, though. Right there's there. the re- that's the only Batman that matters to me. Yeah. Uh, but let's get right. We got to get right into it. So the way this show works for you, those of you who don't know how this show works, is it's, we haven't really done the show, but it's gonna. We have a whole bunch of topics we're gonna talk about. We have. Um, if if you want us to talk about anything, send us an email at digitalcharcuterie at gmail dot com, and we have a list of stuff. But before we get to that list of stuff, Rob, something you. I didn't even know this happened today because I was so hyper focused on like Batman and, and Morbius, but the Fantastic Beasts and where to find them three. The which one is this one? The Crimes of Grindelwald? No, the Secrets of Dumbledore. Secrets of Dumbledore. The trailer, the yeah. trailer released today. You are you are a big Harry Potter fan. Um, you ha- you've kind of been in and out on the Fantastic Beast stuff though. You haven't been too crazy about this stuff though. What did you make of this trailer? Well, yeah, it was nice that they actually dropped it now because I think originally they announced that it was going to drop last Thursday, right? Like it was like they they did those character posters and then they said it was going to come out that day and they were like, there's no trailer coming, uh, stay tuned. And then I, and I instantly thought when that happened, I was just like, oh, they're probably like saving it to next week, like to pair with the Batman or something like that. So I expected it like, you know, maybe not necessarily today, but maybe in a couple days. Uh, like, you know, maybe on Wednesday or even tomorrow or something like that, right? But, you know, we got it. We got it today anyway. Well, right, right. Sorry, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, they definitely they're definitely pairing it with the Batman. But whether it yeah. came out last week or today, I don't understand the, the difference yeah. if you're pairing it with Batman. People people are watching it before the theater. I gotta tell you, I've enjoyed the Fantastic Beasts movies. I mean, they haven't blown me away necessarily, but I find them to be fun, you know, popcorn flicks that kind of get you, you know, they're, they're fantastical and they're fun to watch and they've been a treat. I do think that, you know, I said this last time when someone yelled at me, but I really feel like while jk rowling was writing the first fantastic beast movie she decided it was going to also be about the dumbledore and grindelwald thing right. like halfway through writing it it's how i got and then she went back and she kind of like rewrote stuff to kind of make it all work out because i mean really this there's no need for this to be a, like the fantastic beast title is they didn't need to go that far with it at all they could have just called this one something completely different like rambo is first blood and then eventually people are like it's just called rambo they could have called this one whatever they wanted well, yeah but it's not really about the beasts anymore and it was like yeah like when i when i came into this i was like oh the first fan piece fantastic beast i think i saw it with you we saw it at, uh, uh, uh like i yeah. saw it with you like at a theater and i thought like you know it was just okay and stuff like that you liked it a lot more than i did and then this most recent one that came out the um uh that one's crimes of grindelwald and that's the one that like kind of like took me off a little bit especially with the ending that was a little bit like x many and it's like oh you know it's literally magneto and uh professor x by the end and stuff like that and uh yeah it's very poignant that you just say like you know uh it's like she was writing a different like series to start off with the first movie and then it just transitioned over. But yeah, you're, you're coming to the point where it's like, um, Oh shoot. I forgot his, uh, his uh, name, the, the, the main character that had the, all the beasts and stuff like that. I forget what his name, he's got like a weird name, but it was like, it seemed like it was about him at first. And then like Dumbledore started taking the reins away from him in the last movie a little bit. And then now it's like, he's still a part of it, but he's like, uh, not barely a part of it, but he's a lesser member, almost like um, um, the um, uh, his his Muggle friend. Like he's almost even a bigger character, almost in this trailer than uh, um, than he is. And like even like Catherine Waterston, who's like uh, who's like you know the female lead in the last one, she's not even on these posters. Like I still looked at IMDb. It's like is she still in this movie? And it it sh- it shows her name in the IMDb. So I don't know. Maybe, maybe she's dying in like the first five minutes or something like that and that's going to be it but i don't know yeah it, it's very different if you're comparing it because you know unlike unlike the harry potters where it's like you know 
Harry, Hermione, and Ron, they're, they're the lead characters in the first movie, and they stay the lead characters throughout the entire, uh, you know, mm -hmm. run of the series. You know, this one's kind of like changing perspectives a lot. Yeah, I feel like they're, they're, they're free to make these changes because nobody seems to be obsessing over this series. Mm. Like, I, like I said, I didn't even know this trailer dropped. There's no fanfare that I find from this trailer dropping today. I've seen more people talk about the Morbius trailer, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. And even that one didn't get too much fanfare, uh, which is kind of weird. And, and the movies make okay money, not great money. Uh, and it does feel like they're kind of being made up as they go along. I think they have an ending plan. And I think everybody knows where this is heading towards in that finale. But yeah, it just, it feels like they, you know, it's have, have they even, have they even said how another. Sorry, have they even said how many movies this series is? I think it's five. I think they said five. It's five? Okay. I think Sorry, it's five. Yeah. yeah, I think it's five or seven. Yeah. So they, they know where it's going. It's just it's a matter of getting there and and what I speaking of getting there, Rob, let's get into the show right now. And this is what you can expect on today. The multiverse of madness. Ryan Reynolds says he's not in it, but is he? Indiana Jones 5 is wrapped. Morbius trailer, the final, possibly the final trailer, dropped this morning. And the Batman reviews are in, Rob. The Batman reviews are here it is exciting to read them we're going to get to them in just a little bit but first we got to go on to our first topic for the day and that is the penguin on hbo max is going to be rated r the batman movie of course is only rated pg-13 but this show on hbo max is slated to be rated r Rob, what are your thoughts on it? Are you okay with it? And uh, do you care? Ultimately, does it doesn't matter. Like you, you and I are of age, though, so it doesn't really have any bearings on us. No, it doesn't. But um, yeah, it's it, it's interesting that they chose to go with the R and uh, not shy away from uh, you know maybe showing some full on blood and more violence than uh, maybe this uh, Batman movie ha ha has. But uh, at the same time, it's like the things that we've been hearing about the Batman, it's like, it was apparently very close to getting an R uh, in general. And like, you know, even when you look at uh, its rating in a place like the UK that got, got the 15 uh, rating, I believe that's what it was called. The 15 rating where that just basically means that nobody un, uh, under the age of 15 can go to see the movie. It's not like an accompany thing. It's like just no, no, no one uh, 14 or younger can go and see the movie in the UK, which is, uh, crazy, but at the same time, like, you know, it's cool that they're do choosing the rated R uh, function for this because, again, hearing that's so close and, you know, maybe they'll be able to do a few things that they couldn't do in the Batman because they didn't want to get that R rating, especially um, in North America, which is, you know, a big part of their uh, box office. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool, and I think it uh, works very well. I think I was reading that they want to go – I read an article, an interview with Colin Farrell, and he kind of described how it's going to be about the Penguin – kind of it takes place right after like the end of the movie and he's gonna he's gonna see him kind of mm -hmm. work his way up the ladder of of the criminal underworld in in gotham and re one article i read actually compared it it said like it would be like scarface that this show would be similar to scarface i guess it makes sense for a rated r uh well, especially if there's know. cocaine <laughs> <laughs> well, he was—he wasn't even allowed. Colin Farrell wanted to have a cigar, and he wasn't even allowed to have a cigar in the sh in the movie. Oh. So, there was a hard no on a cigar. Smoking is passe in Hollywood. I think it's okay. I mean, it's on HBO Max. I don't know if it's smart. I mean, the the Snyder Cut was rated R, and that did well for them. Suicide Squad was rated R, but Suicide Squad is a different world. Although, um, so I I don't know. I think it's okay that it's rated R. I just when you look at comic book properties like the Batman and Superman and iron man like these spider-man it's like do they need to be rated r and sure this is a villain and the joker the argument would have to be made that the joker was rated r and so if you want to do it just as the story of this character justice you make this rated r but then if you bring him into a future batman movie and then you have to dummy him down a bit because it shows rated r but the movie he's got to be you know a nice pleasant uh penguin smiling about town like hey, i'm smiling look at me i'm a penguin but in a show he's like i'm gonna shoot you in the head and he shoots him in the head that's a weird discrepancy to me, but at the same time, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen either. Like you're saying, the reviews are saying that it's a very dark film, very edgy, very close, pushing the envelope, envelope, envelope of PG-13 to the R. It's somewhere it wants to be just past that. And so I guess it would probably feel natural for the show to be rated R. I'm looking forward to it. To it. But the one thing, though, it's, it's like James Gunn is like, he makes a Suicide Squad, COVID hits. He's like, nah, I just wrote eight episodes of of uh, peacemaker 
this penguin show is like they're like yeah we're still talking about it. it's like just do it just get just, just do it you know if you want to <laughs> do it just get it done i can't wait to i don't know i'm a big penguin fan as you know looking forward to it i hear his character uh and actually this isn't based on any of the reviews that are out today but one thing i heard is that he doesn't and it's from Colin Farrell mostly is that he doesn't have much screen time, right? He's in like five or six scenes or whatever it is, very minimal. He just wanted to yeah. be in the movie. So it'll be fun to see this character fleshed out. And look, I like I love the penguin. I don't think the penguin is a character that right away needs to be the the head honcho of a movie. He, you know, show him in the background, show him as a thug. Uh, and that's how I uh, I would like to see him portrayed. And that's how it sounds like he is gonna be portrayed in this movie. Yeah, and you bring up Peacemaker is a very good uh, comparison because you know that that shows rated R, and it, and HBO Max in general seems to be working very well with these rated R type of projects. Whether it's you know um, j- just like that or whatever that Sex in the City thing is called, right? Or um, uh, just the movies in general, right? Like Peacemaker literally with that uh, the finale set uh, a record, right? For like that's the most that was the most viewed project that they've ha- had over there, like episode that 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 came out uh, within the twenty four hours that came out. So I mean, it R seems to work for HBO Max very well, and you know um, if they can uh, you know come up with the show and you know with, with with Penguin and you know have him be a bit more violent and you know you and I were both fans of the penguin, but there are a lot of people that aren't right. So if giving penguin, uh, you know, a harder edge, but, and by harder edge, I don't mean, you know, Danny DeVito penguin where he's eating a fish and then, you know, making all these, you know, sexual reference jokes, like, uh, you know, and that's not even R, but it's like, if you can make him like, you know, intimidating, like, like a Tony Soprano and, you know, like the, lovable like in that type of way then that's pretty big accomplishment i think for penguin because even though even though you and i are big fans there are a lot of people that think the penguin's kind of lame so if this they can yeah, the always, show and, I, I, I and just, not make him lame then i'll be great i'm not sure how people think the penguin's lame because he's just a gangster and i think people just look at the uh adam west show a little bit too much and they don't know who the penguin actually is he's kind of a cool character Above lame, and he is one of the top of the rogues gallery. But let's move on now to Scream Six, Rob. Scream Six on your docket. Look at that. I haven't no. seen Scream Five yet because um, the movie theaters were shut down. You had a chance to see it, so why don't you, before we get into this, talk a little without spoilers for those who haven't been able to see it. Talk a little bit about Scream Five and uh, whether or not Scream Five left you wanting a sixth Scream. Yeah, so you know the killers in Scream Five are uh, no, no. I'll skip over that part. Uh, but uh, yeah, you know, um, Scream Five. I think like you know, without you know saying much to it, it was kind of like revitalizing it a little bit. Like it was less like you know, even though it has its meta stuff because that's a huge part about Scream. It was less kind of like almost campy because I thought like you know, even though I like Scream Four, uh, there was a lot of campiness to that movie. Like very like very comedic and you know this one kind of brought back you know the harder edge there there were some really good kills in it and uh you know uh in the movie itself it could still open itself up to uh to uh some more sequels because it's just like you know even though you know there was a resolution to this movie like you know scream five there there could definitely be you know some lingering threads there definitely were some lingering thread threads in this uh movie that could lead to you know more and you know there's always more guys that will or or girls or whoever that um uh will, will be willing to put on that mask so and uh, at the same time uh the directors i think they did they did a really great job so you know uh, I loved uh, Ready or Not, and you know, giving them another shot to do a Scream Six, I, I'm all for that. Yeah, as much as I said, I haven't seen Scream Five yet, but I am looking forward to a Scream Six because this is one of my favorite franchises, as you know. So the more the merrier on the Scream front. I don't know who survives, who doesn't. Um, I'm guessing not a lot of uh, the old favorites do survive on this one uh, in Scream Five, and at some point, you've got to say, "Let it go," just like in the movie Frozen. You got to let it go, Rob, and you got to part ways with those. You know, I thought they all should have died in the fourth one, but here we are in number. Uh, I can't believe it's going to be six of these movies. That's kind of crazy. We go all these years with none of them, and then the sixth one is. And and what I read was it was um uh, I can't remember the the article that I read on, but. Uh, it's going to be in Montreal. They're going to be shooting this one in Montreal, Quebec, in uh, in Canada, right here. So that's whatever. I don't know what that means. If that maybe they're changing locations. Maybe it's Canadian Scream, and they all speak with French Canadian accents. Yeah, it's not Wood Woodboro anymore. It's just yeah, <laughs> French Borough or <laughs> whatever you want to call it. 
<laughs> that's Scream 6. All right, let's move on now to a big topic, and that is Doctor Strange 2. Rob, I've got to talk to you a little bit about Doctor Strange 2. Mm-hmm. Because Ryan Reynolds, people said that Ryan Reynolds, they saw Deadpool in the, by the way, Doctor Strange Batman. Is that Doctor Strange? Is that Doctor Strange? Oh, um, yeah, the symbol right there Batman in the middle. Beyond, yeah. Right there? Yeah, Batman Beyond. Uh, but anyway, Ryan, Ronald, Ryan Reynolds said that he was not in. He's like, I am definitely not in Doctor Strange. Two people said that he was in the poster. They saw him in the poster. He said that is not him and he's not in the film. Um, some people are uh, saying that he is lying, that he's pulling an Andrew Garfield. Um, you know, someone needs to t- uh, reach out to Marvel and say, uh, tell them the story about the boy who cried wolf, Rob, because, you know, they get enough of these actors to keep lying. No one's going to believe them anymore. And why should they? I don't, I, I personally, Rob, I'm not a big fan of when they come out and lie. I know why they have to. And I appreciate that because people want to know too much, but I don't like just stop with the lying. We don't need that anymore. It's, it's over. If he's in it, he's in it. Who cares? Um, but anyway, there's a source, uh, on the um, Diz Insider podcast, the Diz Insider says that Ryan Reynolds is in fact in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Uh, this source is good to believe, as they said months ago, that Captain Carter would appear in Doctor Strange 2. And they also believe that Tobey Maguire, Owen Wilson, and Sophia De Mateno from the Loki series will also be making cameos in the sequel. So, with all the cameos going on, Rob, do you believe them? Do you believe that Ryan Reynolds is in Doctor Strange 2? Do you think that that Deadpool could fit into a Doctor Strange 2 or even into the MCU at all? And, and like, I, I know he will technically be in the MCU when they do make Deadpool 3, but it'll be, like, a, a side. You know what I mean? Like, it won't be, like, a dead-on, like, Ant-Man or, or Captain Marvel. It'll be a, a Deadpool. It'll be a little bit different, a little bit cheeky. So, what do you, what do you feel about Deadpool being in the MCU? Uh, so in the MCU, I've always thought that, you know, Deadpool could 100% fit like, you know, is would he be a shtick that would be difficult to, you know, do like multiple times? Yeah, I think so. But it's like at the same time, like, you know, just seeing him uh, them do a Deadpool three and then him starting to reference a lot of stuff at, in the MCU. And then the, for the first time that he shows up in a team up film where he just tries to swear and he gets bleeped out like that i always thought would be something really funny that they could do with uh deadpool in the mcu as for him uh in doctor strange 2 yeah i'm not i'm not i'm not sure like you know um yeah you have the, the guys that like you know are lying straight up outright like andrew garfield you got patrick stewart who's being asked about you know being uh, whether he was in the trailer or not uh, several times and he's always having these cheeky answers whether it's you know oh people have been trying to imitate my voice for years or who's dr strange this is some some of the fun answers that patrick stewart's been doing without you know straight up lying yeah, that yeah. he's not in it that's kind of fun uh but um yeah whether he's deadpool is in this uh, in in this movie i mean judging by the trailers of dr strange 2 it seems like it's going to be a very heavy movie, like a very like, you know, dramatic movie. And uh, so far, at least judging by the trailers, I, I don't know where that, where his type of, you know, style, like, you know, at least uh, when it comes to Deadpool films um, fits in here. And, I can uh, tell yeah. you. Sure. I'll okay. tell you right now, because there's another movie that doesn't have much comedy and it's a movie called X-Men First Class. Mm-hmm. And they throw in, uh, the beloved character of Wolverine in there for a brief cameo where he says right. F off off or go F yourself or one of those things. Deadpool Rob could simply be a scene similar to that where they go somewhere. Deadpool's there and he's like, what the F is this? And then they move on from there. And it's a right. little joke because if it is heavy, you want to have some jokes in there for some levity. You want to bring it down 100%. a little bit. And yeah. so you just walk into, you just bring Deadpool in like that. What the and then you move on and then because he's going to be in the in the x-men world right so it would make sense so I, that is sorry to interrupt you but that that would be how i could see deadpool working into this movie he definitely could uh, like you know it, it's possible and you know e- even though we've had there's been several heavy trailers i mean like i don't think that uh, any of the end game trailers were very you know uh tongue-in-cheek but you know when you watch the movie it's like oh almost anything Ant-Man does in that movie is very, is very funny, right? Like yeah. there's a lot of comedy with, with, with him. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, some trade seems to be saying that, that uh, he is going to be in the movie and that Ryan Reynolds might be lying. Others are saying like downright opposite. Like I've uh, John Campia, another like, you know, fellow YouTube YouTuber, he has full out and right outright said that he's contacted someone at uh, uh, Disney and uh, Marvel 
and they've outright told him that he's not in the movie and this is com- com- completely untrue. So I don't know. There's 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 several things and you'll you'll always have that with different sources, right? Uh, there were several people that uh, sources that were saying that you know Toby and Andrew might not have even been in um, No Way Home as well. So. Uh, we'll only know uh, when we actually see the movie, but whether I think that he will actually be in the movie, I'm leaning towards no. I think myself. I don't know where I am. I'm I'm 50-50 on it. I, I don't think so, but also at the same time, I could see him pop. Like I said, I, I could see him popping up into this movie because everybody on the planet that's ever been in a comic book movie seems to be in this movie. Right. There's going to be all three Incredible Hulks, 17 Iron Men, <laughs> Every X Men to ever play an X Men in any kind of form, the Spider Man from the '60s cartoon is going to be like everything. Every Marvel we've ever gotten apparently is showing up in this movie. No, uh, is there even as uh, Mr. Yeah. Fantastic, right? <laughs> Krasinski, Krasinski's playing everybody. Is there yeah. even a plot to this movie? Is it just like here? Here's a bet. It's like the best of episode of a sitcom from the '80s. Like right. <laughs> remember when this happened? Oh yes, I do. And they're all sitting on the couch. I don't know, but what do you guys think? Is Deadpool showing up? in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, or is he not? Let us know in the comments down below. All right, Rob, let's move on now to some good old-fashioned Indiana Jones fun. Frank Marshall Mm. tweeted out the other day this weekend that it was a wrap. Indiana Jones 5 has wrapped principal photography. There you see the nice Indiana Jones hat. I am a huge Indiana Jones fan. Love Indiana Jones. It's This one's directed by... Uh, James Mangold is a little bit different. No Steven Spielberg, who obviously is staying on as a producer, whatever that ends up meaning, we don't really know. Um, we, we did see some behind-the-scenes images where they had uh, Harrison Ford with the dots on his face for de-aging. He was with Toby Jones in those shots, some de-aging. We know that the Nazis are back. Rob, are you excited to see Indiana Jones face off against the Nazis once again? Well, you know, uh, James, Raiders of the Lost Ark is one of my favorite movies of all time. So, so is The Last Crusade. So, no, I'm not. Uh, I'm not excited for this at all. Uh, no, I, I am very excited for this. Um, if, you know, if if uh, Steven Spielberg can't do this movie, James Mangold's a great, uh, you know, person to be doing it anyway. Because I don't think I've seen a James Mangold movie that I have not at least liked. You know, you can say people can say whatever they want about The Wolverine, but I still think that's a solid movie. And then you look at movies like Logan and Ford v Ferrari and um, a lot of the other movies he, he's done 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 the past beforehand. Uh, what was it? Copland, right? That was another great great Stallone movie uh, that he actually did. And uh, yeah, like I'm, I'm very excited for this. I mean. Um, he, uh, Harrison Ford's back as Indiana Jones, and you know, you know the, the only thing that's you know hurting me a little bit is all these delays for this movie. I mean, it's constantly being delayed, and you know, hopefully, ho- hopefully we get it in um, a year and four months or whatever it is, roughly now. So I'm really hoping it sticks to this date because yeah, I'm very much looking forward to seeing this. I think it is going to stick to this date. The date is it's June 30th, 2023. So they got a lot of principal or a, a lot of pre post production going on on this one with the editing, de aging, and all that fun stuff. I'm glad to see him going back to his roots of what it is. I feel like this is going to be the very last Indiana Jones that we're going to get until, you know, Harrison Ford sadly passes away and they decide that they can recast him at that point because I don't think they're going to until then. I think you should milk, unless they do like a prequel show on Disney Plus about Indiana Jones. Yeah, the adventures of young Indiana Jones. It writes itself. I'm excited. Like you said, James Mangold is a very competent, talented director. I actually really, 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 really like The Wolverine. I think it's an underrated comic book movie. Uh, It's a lot of fun. I was surprised at how much I enjoyed that one, especially coming off the heels of X-Men Origins Wolverine, which (laughs) which is what it is. is. I'm excited to see what they got in store for us. Spielberg left this, and then it kind of like Mangold came on, and they hit the ground running. They had a few setbacks, obviously, and then COVID set them back even longer. But now we got mm-hmm. June 30th, 2023, and I'm looking forward to the days and months ahead of what what's going to come out about this movie with a plot and all that stuff, and I'm really excited for it. I, I love Indiana Jones. It's a lot of fun. Some of the best music you're ever going to find in cinema. And this John morning, is the goat. John the Williams, goat. he is. Uh, this morning at 9 a.m., the Morbius trailer debuted on youtube i did a reaction to it right here on the channel it's just me going oh oh wow oh okay okay rob did you get a chance to take a look at this trailer i did and you know i i i i kind of wanted to watch that uh uh, reaction of yours now james just to see what you could possibly say because i don't know for me i watch this trailer and i'm just like i didn't see a whole lot 
new or, or different from it, right? Like they, they've had so many trailers for this movie already, and it seems like you know they're 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 just ready to show you this movie because now this movie has been delayed. I think what uh, a good like year and a half from its very first original. It was uh, supposed to come out date. July twenty twenty one was the original release date. It was the original no, 20, 2020, July 2020. Sorry, July yeah. 2020. Yeah. Right, right. So yeah, it's it's been it it's been delayed up to wazoo, like uh, uh completely considering this movie was originally supposed to come out well before uh both Venom 2 and uh uh, uh No Way Home, and now it's coming out after both, right? And uh <laughs> so just kind of funny that it's like you know, uh with uh the director and just having to see his vision get pushed back and pushed back and pushed back and have his references to whatever um the, the rest of the Sony verse uh Spider Verse is. And you know, I'm just I'm just looking forward to seeing it all. Like we, we saw that one really cool clip that they keep showing in these trailers with the one on the the tanker and stuff like that. And they show like the full scene or full, most of the scene as a clip. And that's just that's just an awesome clip. I love the way it's lit. I love the way the action action's done. So I'm ready to see it. You know, even though I'm not a huge Jared Leto fan, um, like you know, I think he's a perfectly fine actor. He just he seems like he want he does too much with some of his acting roles, like uh, him as Joker a little bit. Like uh, you know, even though I thought his um, performance in the Snyder Cut was improved from uh, Suicide Squad, uh, I still thought like you know, he's not my favorite Joker. And even in a movie that I completely love, like Blade Runner twenty forty nine, all of his scenes are like you know some of the weaker scenes or we- weaker parts of of scenes uh, in the movie. So uh, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm in general, though I am very much looking forward to Morbius in general. I gotta tell you, I watched this trailer. I like you. It didn't change too. I was like, you know, you're gonna throw it another Morbius trailer. Make they like, put something in it. Yeah. Um. But it it it. I like. It was like, it was like Ke- Keaton spoke a little bit more. That was. About I like. It, at least. I like this one the most of all of them, and I think that's why because it. it well, Michael Keaton is a better actor than anybody else in like half of these movies that we get. And it was it was interesting. Tyrese like, Gibson so upset. <laughs> but I'm I mean in, I'm intrigued to see what what his role is in this movie because at first it was like oh is that like the end of the movie? But now it seems like he's got something maybe towards the middle of it. Like after Morbius kind of gets his powers and comes back, he gets sent to like prison or something. And is this the Vulture from Tom Holland's universe, or is this a variant of that? Because there's also rumors going around that Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, one of those two Spider-Man appear in this. Mm. Uh, and that's going to tie it together. This, but that will be a post credit scene. The post credit scene is going to have Tobey Maguire or Andrew Garfield, Spider-Man in the Morbius movie. Uh, so there was rumors, there were, there were some rumors coming out that they would have a sneak peek of them in this trailer. Obviously that didn't come to pass, but I think it would make sense to throw them in it. And there's also talk that, that, that they throw Andrew Garfield or Tobey Maguire in. I'm thinking more Andrew Garfield than Tobey Maguire, though Andrew Garfield said he, he hasn't... <laughs> He's not coming back, and he also mentioned that every everything he says, everybody will assume he's lying. Now he did yeah. reference that, but if it is him, it would make you know he would be a variant of the Amazing Spider-Man that we saw. He wouldn't be that Amazing Spider-Man. So all of a sudden, it gets way too confusing. I think you you got to pick who your Spider-Man is. If anything, we talked about it. You um on our Super Tuesday a couple of weeks ago, a Miles Morales would be a perfect Spider-Man for this universe. Brand new, someone blah blah. Bring him in. Let us start from scratch. Ben Riley, right James. Ben yeah, Riley. You're, you're, Ben Riley is your favorite. You bring Ben Riley yeah. in, but there are options um, because whether or not this universe can exist without Spider-Man, it's, it will remain to be seen. Because we got Craven coming, we've got Madam Web coming, and we've got uh, another Venom. Obviously, is going to be coming, and Morbius is on its way. How do you think Morbius is going to do at the box office? It's hard to say. I mean, it. If if I I think if it if there was no Omicron and it, it did not push release dates from uh, January I think in January it was actually going to do really well especially considering that was following uh, No Way Home uh, and like I, I feel like it would have might have like rode that momentum like straight to like a lot of success you know here I don't know because now it's suddenly uh, you know stuck in a month where it's g- going to have like a lot more competition like for movies coming out after after this one, like uh, a- April is already like a fairly bloated month and you'll have some, some hit movies coming out from the end of March as well. Um, like, you know, w- when, when Morbius even comes out, like, you know, the Batman could still be doing pretty good business even by that point. Right. So I, I, if I was to take a guess, I think that, you know, 
it could do all right. Like if I'm looking at like a number in the U.S. coming out and like in uh, for opening weekend, it could do like 40 or 50, like around like the, those Uncharted numbers, which I think would be like, you know, a fairly decent success for like a character that's, you know, never even been referenced in a um a superhero movie before it, I don't believe. So, um, yeah, for it to be just this little, um, um, and, and, and a character that's also nowhere near as popular as someone like Venom. Right. Um, and you know, so, so I, I think that, you know, it could do 40 or 50, uh, in this release date. Uh, but you know, I, I think that it could have done like even like 70 or like maybe even 80 in January, honestly. Yeah. I'm with you. I thought, taking it out of January was a mistake because like you said, you had no way home pushing it right in. And mm-hmm. you had the success of scream, right? Scream kind of showed like, Hey people, I mean, it wasn't over the top successful and maybe that's what they're looking for, but I don't know if Morbius was ever going to get there. And I think scream showed that people were willing to go to the theater, not in Ontario where we are because we couldn't, but people were willing yeah. to go to the theater to watch a movie that they had, that they believed was worth their time was worth, you know, <laughs> risking getting this, uh, this uh, this pandemic right now so i don't know i i the the other thing though with april april 1st is that is a two days after moon knight hits and so right. if moon knight is successful this could carry the momentum of moon knight because this is in the same realm of weirdism that moon knight is in right yeah they're doing moon knight they're doing werewolf by night the blade they're bringing in 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 these uh, creatures now so morbius might be able but it might be too early but it might actually benefit from moon knight's success if moon knight is of course a successful uh series that first day that i think many people are anticipating apparently uh, oscar isaac is incredible in the in it. he put everything on the table so we'll see I, i'm curious I, you know i wasn't that interested in the morbius i was interested in the morbius movie then i wasn't interested in it now i'm slowly getting back on being interested in it once again so we'll see april is uh it's only a month away rob so we've got uh, we've got time for us to either lose our interest or gain it all completely all right here we go yeah and and just sorry looking at it like in general like the bloated month that it's looking at it's that's coming out one week and then literally the following week afterwards you got uh sonic which is coming out so that's that's gonna kill some of its momentum i think and then i think yeah two weeks after that is fantastic beast which is a movie that we just talked about a moment ago so sonic the sonic will be a different audience though but it's it's yeah we'll see we'll see yeah. All right, moving on. Our final topic for the day, Rob. The final one. The Batman reviews are coming in hot. If you go on Rotten Tomatoes, uh, dun, 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 how do you refresh the page? Rotten Tomatoes. It's it's been fluctuating all day, so I'm going to try my best to give you the actual score at the time of this recording. It is at 90%. So when we started this, I think it was 94, 96%. It went down to 91%. It went back up to 94. Now, as of this writing, it is 90%. But I got to I gotta be honest with you. So I, I haven't looked at many of the reviews. I'm not looking at the spoilery stuff or anything like that, right? I'm just looking at, I don't, I wouldn't do this, but for the sake of conversation in this channel, I am doing this, but I'm looking at it right here. And so Rotten Tomatoes, which I haven't been on in for years, they have top critics, which I'm guessing are, you know, the real critics. And then, <laughs> and, and then they have like the other ones. fake well, critics. <laughs> well, you know, it's 2022. Everybody's a critic. Right. Uh, so I'm looking and top critics right now. I'm seeing three, four, five. Well, there's a lot of reviews, but on the first three pages, five of the top critics gave it a, 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 uh, a rotten review. However, I do. We got to talk about this with Rotten Tomatoes, though. Before we get into anything, I see one that's a positive, but it's two point five out of four. Two point five out of five. Rob, I don't care who you are. That's like I kind of liked it. You know what I mean? Like that's not like a rave review. It's like mm-hmm. I always thought. Like I'm pretty sure with um with Ebert, Roger, and e, like when Ebert did his his uh his reviews on his Chicago was he the Tribune Times whatever he was on. He if he did a 2.5, which I believe Batman Forever was a 2.5 out of four, it was a negative review. It was a thumbs down from Roger Ebert. Uh-huh. So I I, I look, I'm, I'm excited for the movie. None of these reviews are going to change that at all. You see a lot of YouTubers like us loving this movie, and these critics and these YouTubers that have something to prove are are you know it's too dark and too much rain i don't even know what that means I mean, daredevil had a lot too of much rain, rain. <laughs> yeah uh 
Uh, Robert Pattinson is a perfect fit for the cowl, but is bloated. But this bloated effort lacks focus. I think. Anyway, what are your thoughts on the Rotten Tomatoes score overall? I mean, um, it's it's fine. Like, like uh, ninety percent is nice and stuff like that. You know, it it, it only had me worried if it was like suddenly you know, just out of nowhere sixty percent. I would just been like, whoa, okay, so what the heck happened here? Uh, that 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 would have thrown me off. But you know. 90% that that just really doesn't matter all that much to me. I just, you know, looking at some of the highlights of the things that, uh, you know, people are liking and people not liking. Um, it's, it seems fine. Like I, 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 the only, I've only actually watched one review and that was from uh Christian Harloff. who's like a uh, one, one that I like, like to listen to and whatnot, because he just like comes off as a very, um, you know, regular guy, like, you know, just watching, watching these movies. And w- I think his biggest negative that he said was the length. You know that it's you know nearly three hours long, and you know I'm I'm completely fine with the length. If he says that's you know maybe a little bit too long and stuff like that, that's fine. That's you know his his opinion and whatnot. I'm still completely hyped for this movie. Um, I mean like you know you have you have some of the people being like, oh, it's uh, it's all over the place, like like what you said, like you know unfocused, right? And that was a thing that I was maybe thinking slightly in the back of my head when I started hearing about all the characters that were going to be at it, like that you have Catwoman, Riddler, and Penguin, but everything since then has completely you know, made me feel fine with it because Catwoman's going to be more of like, you know, an anti-hero, I think, in this movie. Penguin's only got, you know, his five or six scenes, whatever, whatever they're saying that he's in. And then, you know, Rid- Riddler's the main bad. He's the, he's the main villain. So I don't know. I, I they're saying about this un- unfocused stuff, but uh, I, I'm not really uh, worried about that. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to see this movie, James. Like I'm going to be seeing it in I'm just sure. uh, over, just over two days. So I'm looking forward to it. I, I don't know. The, my issue with things like this, the unfocusedness is what, what does that mean? Mm. Like, does it mean that you think that penguin should be the main bad guy that he shouldn't be in this movie? If he's not the main bad guy, the Catwoman needs to just be uh, stealing jewelry. I don't understand what, I haven't seen it obviously. So I can't, but, but I just, my concern with it is that we've heard that this movie got delayed so much because of COVID, just like we we're talking about Morbius, Morbius, but, instead of being released, it was the shooting that got delayed for this. We've been hearing about this for so long. Mm. Matt Reeves is so passionate about it. And you hear what he's bringing to it. And maybe it comes off a little bit pre- pretentious at times, I suppose. And people are influenced by these videos and these interviews and all this stuff when they go in to see a movie. And sometimes, even though it's a positive talk, it influences you negative because you're like, oh, that person thinks blah, blah. And then you go in and all of a sudden, you know, you have this thought in your mind and then you let that kind of explode while you're watching it. And I think that's going to happen. I think that's going to happen with this movie, good and bad. That's what I think. I think people are going to love this movie to, to, to poo poo on the naysayers. And I think some people are not going to like it just to prove a point. Like, Oh no, I did not like that. Like, you know, now all of a sudden people are starting to hate like the Chris, the Christopher Nolan trilogy, right? It's like, Oh, it's not that good. Right. It's not that good. And I, I love that trilogy. I mean, it was never perfect. It was a really good trilogy. It was solid. All, th- all three movies are solid on their own. I mean, they need each other. Oh, the first one doesn't, but the, you know, they're, they're very solid films. But now, as time goes on, people are like I didn't like it, and now, and I'm kind of gonna. What's going to annoy me the most with this movie is the comparisons to The Dark Knight because The Dark Knight is the gold standard of Batman movies, whether you like it or not. That's the gold standard, and for some reason, people are either afraid to like something more than that, or they're or they just want to like something more than that. And so that that's what's going to annoy me the most about this movie, and I feel like. Who cares if you like one more than the other? Mm-hmm. Because the reality is, if this is a good movie, that means we're getting another good Batman movie. Let's just have good Batman movies and enjoy good Batman movies and not pit them up against one another. Uh, but, but again, again, my thoughts on this Rotten Tomato score is whatever. I, I mean, like I said, I look at them and I see a lot of these critics that, you know, they probably just have a blog and they somehow got on there and they want to get a name for themselves. So they put a negative score or they are just, or, you know, the same type of thing, but on the flip side, and they're just fans of Batman and Matt Reeves and they want to give this thing a good score to help out Matt Reeves. And that's how people are right now. And then that's, you know, whatever, that's fine. We like, I got a lot of emails last week and we talked about it on the show where people love the movie and you take it and you love it. And the thing is, is like, I'm curious what the audience score on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I guess maybe Friday, Saturday, whenever it comes, is going to be what that audience score is going to be on Rotten Tomatoes. 
I'm not that I really care, but I'm curious because we talked about Uncharted and Last Jedi and how those are very flip flop of one another. And I'm curious to see. But the one thing, like you said, though, is the length, the length of time. It's three hours. I do not like three hour movies. <laughs> that being said, there are three hour movies that I do enjoy. If the movie needs the time to tell the story, I'm usually fine with that length of time, like Lord of the Rings, Zodiac, things like that. I think need the time. The new James Bond movie does not need the amount of time that it had that it could have been like a half hour oh. tv show that thing rob like i forgot halfway through it that uh jeffrey wright was even in it i was like what the hell he, anyway uh, <laughs> was, that was the longest that movie felt like an eternity but that's besides the fact some movies some movies i'm okay with being the time that being said we talked about the dark knight or i did the dark knight is always the gold standard but i know a lot of people who are not huge fans of that movie because they find it way too long and way too bloated. And if they find that movie way too long and way too bloated, I can only imagine that they're what they're going to think of this movie. Unless of course it all comes together seamlessly, which who knows this again, though, Rob might be better suited. And I hate to say it because I feel like the Snyder cut of the justice league was like this, but this film may work better streaming. Oh, with like, possibly chapters as well just like no uh, no just like when uh, it when it hits when it hits hbo max you'll be able to pause it go pee pause it go get chicken dinner pause it go mm. pee pause it i'm just saying for not for you and i i know where you are but i'm just saying as in the grand scheme of things a movie that is three hours long as well as it might do in the in theaters i think it it's going to be more appreciated when it hits streaming because of the length and because of the stopping and you know you can watch it over a week if you wanted like a series well i wonder in general if there's like you know an extended cut of some kind that you know matt reeves has somewhere there's and, not uh, there's not no no he exactly said how you want he said there's not he did sorry to interrupt you but there's not he said there's no delete he said this is the movie he wanted to make but there is one scene that he loves that got cut he said it will be on a deleted scene on the when you buy it a home video it will be a deleted scene um, and it has the unseen prisoner. And what I think he's doing by this is tempering up expectations for the Joker in this movie. But anyway, Rob, sorry, continue. No, no, and uh, yeah, like what, like with the length, like you know, again, I was just wondering, you know, Devil's Advocate, if 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 he's going to have one. But if he's not, then he's not. Then you know, we'll have some deleted scenes that are possibly great. And you know, hearing that there's one that you know he felt like he needed to cut that he completely loves is, is pretty great. Sometimes I do think some auteurs like, you know, fall in love with their version of it and they don't want to like, you know, edit anything out whatsoever. And, you know, even though I completely love like, you know, something like um, the Snyder uh, cut of justice league, there could have been some stuff that could have been trimmed a little bit there, but, but, but very little, I think, because um, like when it comes to like, you know, how much uh, Joss Whedon seemed to think that uh, he should have been tri trimmed to service the characters uh, is pretty ridiculous because there are several things. There are a lot of stuff in just like the Snyder, uh, the Snyder uh, cut that I think um, utterly needed to be in that movie to uh, understand characters and, you know, make you uh, like the characters and, you know, even simple stuff like um, Wonder Woman just going up to that little girl, like after she takes down the robbers and just, you know, having that little exchange with her, like simple stuff like that, which would have literally added like a minute to the runtime of the movie. I, I, I just do not understand why Joss Whedon would even think about cutting something like that. And, um, yeah, like uh, back to the one we were discussing, the unfocused part, and going back to another movie that has Batman in it that was directed by Zack Snyder. I mean, without you know the the Snyder cut of Justice League, I do think think and I do understand the people that say like you know watching Batman v Superman for the first time is kind of unfocused because you know you're watching it and now it's all of a sudden you know going into this dream sequence with the Nightmare Batman and yeah it's it's going the it's laying the groundwork for the future and stuff like that but at the same time it's kind of like jumping around with the story that they're trying to tell and being a little unfocused there so so even though I love Batman v Superman that's that's a thing. I I think works with it however even though i say that, that that's unfocused i can't see that level of you know jumping around in perspectives and you know what the, what the story is about applying to something like the batman because i don't know what else what other like you know grand scope stories that they could be telling that will be in uh, uh, you know um conflicting with the main narrative like this one just comes off to me like it will probably be fairly focused but you know 
we'll, we'll well, only know when we actually see it. Apparently, like what I'm hearing, this one is a very Batman centric film, very Batman driven, not Bruce Wayne driven, Batman driven. That's what I mean. I don't mean like the one character. I mean they're they're very separate. And and that prequel novel that I read that doesn't really do much is the same. But I've heard that the opening of it is a little bit slow. I don't know how much of the opening, because again, I'm not trying to get into the spoilery stuff, so I try to ignore, like once it starts to get somewhere, I've been stopping it, but apparently the opening is a little bit slow, but the last 45 minutes, it's uh, what I've heard from a few people that I uh, respect uh, and th- that I know a little bit, is that the last 45 minutes is some of the best stuff they've ever seen on in, in the theater. Like they were like mm-hmm. edge of their seat, like excited for it. They didn't tell me what it was, because again, I don't like the spoilers yeah. and they don't want to spoil it for me, and that's you know, thank goodness they respect that. But yeah, it, it so the beginning might be where people are a little bit like, eh. but then again, it might reel you back, re- might even reel you in, right? So maybe some people aren't enjoying it, and then the ending is so good that it reels them in. And when you leave, because it's the last impression, right? It's like how you meet someone, and then the last impression, and that's what you kind of walk away with. I'm really curious um, how that is. I just watched Batman uh, v Superman, the extended version last night, and I love that movie. I, I actually really, really enjoy it. Uh, we got to do a ranking Batman yeah. movies on here, or we should not even rank. We should just talk about all Batman movies because I love them all. Like I said, but I'm really excited for for this one. Do you think there's a? I I, I gotta say though, when I I'm gonna refresh Rotten Tomatoes one more time while we're doing this, because mm-hmm. uh, it was at ninety percent. And let's see when I hit the refresh button. Eighty nine percent now. It's dropping fast, Rob. It's dropping. <laughs> I will say this though. Like I said, I don't give a rat's but about these scores i don't care about rotten tomato scores at all mm-hmm. but we're using this as the talking point to talk about expectations going into seeing this movie and i kind of like that they're I, i'm i'm I, I like that it's not all 100 percent across the board right i like that some people are a little bit torn on it some people might not like it look not everybody likes everything that's something else we have to remember right it's like you know if somebody hates batman they're gonna walk into this movie and they're gonna leave most likely hating batman no matter what you do Right. There's just there's just that, um, but eighty nine percent now. I, but I I look at it and the one thing that it is is now you go in and maybe expectations now because it's not ninety five percent, it's not ninety nine percent. Now expectations maybe are reeled in a little bit, are held a little bit shorter, lighter, they're tempered a little bit, and you walk in now and you can actually people who actually you know read the reviews for the reviews they can walk in now and maybe enjoy the movie a little bit more because they're seeing like, Oh, it's not a perfect film. Then you walk in and when you're expecting something to not be perfect and it ends up being better than your expectations, you like it more. And when you walk in and something's supposed to be perfect and it's not, you like it even like it's, that's how things work. So maybe this is a good thing for this movie and the audience reaction. Yeah. I think even, even if you, you're the opposite and you know, um, you were expecting it to be bad and then you see these, these reviews and they're, they're doing it one way. I think either way you should just not be holding that, you know, even though these are nice and, you know, these are perfect, the great things for them to put on, like, you know, the Blu-ray cover or whatever, uh, whatever cover or poster that they want to put on at the same, t- at the, at, at the end of the day, don't hold these, uh, people's opinions to, you know, on, on a holy grail because at the, at the end of the day opinions is exactly what they are they may be critics but there's still people with just opinions so you should go go be going into this movie and you know um making up your mind for, for yourself right whether you're going in and expecting it to be the holy grail and at times winds up being a little bit less than that or you're going in uh not expecting it to be um a, a great movie and it turns out being a great movie right either way you should be you know, ready to watch this movie and make up your own mind for yourself. I think. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's the best thing. And on this channel on Thursday night at 10 PM Eastern, we're going to have a non-spoiler uh, talk review of it. And then the next day at 3 PM Friday at 3 PM to 5 PM, we're going to be doing a live spoiler filled talk right here on the channel. We're going to talk about it. We won't review it. We're just going to talk about it. So join us in the chat for that. Cause it's going to be a-, a lot of fun. Uh, Again, though, you know, you look at it mostly, though, 89% is still overwhelmingly positive. That is still crazy positive. It is, hold on, I got to check now how many reviews that was. I think that was 142. So, of 142 people, 90%, 89% of 142 people like it. That's pretty good odds. Like, you have a good odd that you're going to like it. But again, as long as one person doesn't like something, there's a chance that you won't like it too. Cause if you don't like Batman, you don't like detective stories and maybe three hours is too long for you. As much as three hours might not be too long. It might be too long. Sometimes you watch a movie and you're like, Oh my God, this is still going. That happens sometimes. And maybe 
And the thing is, that might happen for one person, but that might not happen for you. You might be, well, that three hours flew by, but somebody else will say it won't. And it's all subjective, and that's what's fun about it. But these reviews, Rob, are, yeah. Um, let me read. As grim as the burden Nolan and Snyder films were, Reeves and his team have fashioned their own distinctive and stylish variety of grimness, and they commit to it for three whole hours. Frankly, it's amazing that they got away with it. That is a three out of five score from Nicholas Barber from BBC.com. Mm-hmm. And that's another an indicator about the uh, rating as well. I think that it's just yeah. like he's kind of hinting at that. You know, this movie's a PG thirteen movie, but you know, it 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 pushes the edges from the sounds of things. So it's very cool. And here's one that's four out of five. Check this out. This is comicbook.com. As a reboot, the Batman is very good reintroduction of the Batman movie franchise, but one that feels like a victim of circumstance. That's four out of five. That if you read that, that doesn't sound too, you know. Positive, yeah. Yeah, I'm kidding. That's my one thing, though, Rob, is, is how far are they going to go into the Batman origins? I, you know, like that. It's again, we don't need to see it all. I'm curious to see how they progress this this character, and I'm glad that they're taking this as as a year two approach to it, and not like right out of the hop. Because again, I watched Batman v Superman yesterday, and the opening credits when you see Batman's parents, you're like, oh man, I get. It. But but in fairness to that movie, they're doing it for Martha. Obviously, that's the reason why they do okay. it. Everybody, everybody's least favorite line that I think is that why'd is, you say that name? Why'd you say it? But it's the last name he heard his father say ever. So it kind of, you know, you got to tie it back at the. But again, that movie's like nine hours long, and you forget that that's what he what she says by the time it happens later on in the right. movie. Uh, there's a lot more to it. This I don't think this movie's gonna have a thing like that. I have to ask you one more question, Rob. Are you a fan of the Arkham games? I am a huge fan of the Arkham games. Like how? I haven't played, I have not played all of them because now they have so many different Telltale games and that type of stuff. I do not delve, delve that far. I've only gone to the main three of the trilogy and then Arkham Origins so far. So th- yeah. those are the only ones I've. I don't have Origins, but I have the other three. I got a three pack last. I love these. I am so bad at them, but I absolutely love these games. Are the Telltale games? They were a free PS Plus game one month so i got that and i got them all and the, that one's actually it's very different it's it's not really a video game it's a little a lot of different but it's a lot of fun also but i gotta ask you, you 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 play those games you love those games you see the trailers for this how similar to the arkham games do you think that this movie could be well i mean i i think there's a lot of similarities especially with the way that you know like the fight scenes and stuff like that and also just straight down to the way uh robert pattinson looks in that costume like if you just compare like his gauntlets to like you know the layout of the suit it looks very arkham like like there's a lot of similarities i think there and um yeah and it's just the way that he moves i think there there those games are so good for a reason and there's plenty of things that i think uh plenty plenty of uh aspects of it that uh should be repeated in uh in live action projects in general so it's very cool that they're uh uh possibly taking some uh um some inspiration from that like recently pattinson said some of his uh um stories that he was looking at and you know um that 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 he was taking inspiration from from batman and you know they they weren't the common like common uh ones that nope. you always hear it wasn't like him saying oh i took inspiration from the long halloween or the dark knight returns or batman year one right it's he took he took some inspiration from some of the more obscure stuff which is which was very cool because that kind of means that you know maybe he didn't read the whole thing but he read pretty a pretty good amount of it at least or, or or all of it but still it's uh it's very interesting the inspiration that they're taking from this and like i said um i think that uh, they took some inspiration from uh arkham games as well for this i watched a interview with paul dano who said that he had so much downtime because of COVID. he would actually go to his room his hotel room and just read like Riddler comics and Batman comics and get to know the character more. So I think they had a lot of time and they got to know these characters more than any other actor probably playing superheroes ever have because of the amount of downtime they had due to right. due to COVID. I, look, one thing that I think is really cool is that his emblem's a, a utility knife. I think that's cool. And that's what they need to add to the Arkham series is a uni- utility knife emblem. Because at first, you know, I always miss the yellow, but now I kind of get it. You know, the utility knife is it's kind of sweet that they... Uh, that they mm-hmm. thought about that. I'm really curious to see what they have in store for us when it comes to the Batman. Rob, if this goes down to 60, 68%, are you still going to be excited to see it? 
<laughs> well, I can't say going down to 68%, but yes, I will still be excited. I'll just maybe have some tempered expectations slightly, maybe. But uh, no, at the same time, I'll still be extremely, it'll still be my number one uh, most anticipated movie of the year, I think. Have you had a chance to listen to the soundtrack at all by Michael Giacchino? I have not. I do not want to. I do not want to hear that stuff. I will uh, completely delve into the soundtrack uh, afterwards. Like uh, that's uh, Giacchino is so good, and that's one thing I did even with Spider Man. Like I went straight on the Spotify uh, playlist for the uh, album of uh, Spider Man No Way Home and just played that like you know nonstop after I saw the movie. And I did not want to hear the you know the leaked tracks of you know the Garfield theme or the. Uh, um toby theme um beforehand i was just i was ready to see it happen in the movie and you know take it all in at that point so no i've not uh listened to any of the tracks here um but you know they've been evident in uh, the trailers and you know so forth so i think this uh scores would be awesome i can't wait to delve into it after i see the movie fantastic soundtrack uh mm-hmm. one that i really really enjoy i it it would i don't think it's as strong as some other superhero soundtracks it's very different. It is unique, uh, but it's also reminiscent of a lot of old Batman stuff as well. Um, there was there was some time I'm just listening to it on my you know walking around. I don't listen to I don't see the I looked looked at the track names that one time, um, but but you know and then they kind of have spoilers, but not really because I think they learned their lessons from the Phantom Menace. But I you know I hope so. House, yeah, just walking around the house listening to it, and uh, and sometimes I'm like, oh my gosh, that sounds like something from from the past and mm. it, it sounds it sounds nice i'm very excited and look these reviews we're going to talk more about the reviews and what it means going forward on the channel uh like i said though thursday and friday we're going to be having we're going to be having spoiler talks forever on this movie because i think i don't think it's going to go away anytime soon it's very exciting uh you are going to see it on wednesday and you're going to have a reaction out of the theater wednesday night for the channel bam bam right up there um are you going to go spoilers on that? No, no spoilers. No spoilers. Okay, I'm excited to see that. That <laughs> yeah. I wasn't going to the first time, but now I am. I hope you enjoy. It. You know, ninety percent, eighty nine percent, whatever it is. Uh, be yeah, damned. No, uh, no spoilers. And I'm gonna aim. Uh, I'll, I'll be around a minute, probably out of, out of the theater. Yeah, I'll, no, that's perfect. Bit, yeah, that's perfect. Can't wait. Um, but that will do it for this Manic Monday, Rob. This is it. This is the show. We just blah, 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 we go right through all the topics. I cut you off. You were mm-hmm. going to say something about the penguin, I think, uh, before the end of it, and I completely okay. cut you off because that's how it's we about, do it here. I just it's, it's the manic you part off. of it. Yeah, yeah. If that's what's manic about it. We're just trying to get through the topics of the weekend, and we did. If there's anything you want to hear us talk about on an upcoming show on the channel, let us know. You can email us at digitalsharcuterie at gmail dot com or give us a comment in the comment down below. Hello, but until then, he's Rob. I'm James. Look for his review Wednesday. Can't wait to see it. And until then, may you be the master of your own universe.